Let's talk today about how I started raising fish. If you're thinking about it, maybe there's some of the things I'm doing that'll help you. Let's do it. Okay, so you can see here that I have two ponds currently set up. We have the big one over here, and we have a little one over there. Okay, we're gonna start on the little one because that's how I got started. I added this one a little while later. So let's jump over there and take a look at that. Okay, so this was the first setup here. This is a 150 gallon Rubbermaid stock tank. I got it from Tractor Supply for around, I think $130 or so. <clears throat> now when I got it, uh, for the first, oh, six months or so, that pipe right there was not there. That's a um, solids lifting outlet. And I put that in a few months ago. Uh, that pipe over there currently does nothing, so don't worry about that. What I had to begin with was just the stock tank. I had a little pump sitting down here at the bottom of the pond that went up to this little fountain over here. Uh, it's not a fountain, it's a waterfall. And <clears throat> all I had for filtration was some filter floss and some other material, some sponges and stuff down inside of here. And that worked great while my fish were small. I started with, I ordered 50 tilapia. Uh, upon arrival, five of them were dead. And I didn't know anything about what I was doing, so I did not know you had to cycle the tank to begin with. So uh, I lost several more along the way. I think I ended up with about 35 of the original ones. Now, <clears throat> this would be great with less fish than that. I could have just kept them all in here, but I soon realized that um, this tank is a little small for what I need to do. So that's when I jumped over to something larger. Uh, this one here is a thousand gallon um, pool. I don't think it's an NX brand, but this one I got for about 120 or so on Amazon. This is not really an ideal setup either. Uh, there's several problems with these. Number one, they don't last that long. Uh, from what I understand, I might get a year or two out of it, maybe three, if I'm really lucky. It is mostly sheltered from the weather, um, being under a roof here. I do have some protection around it from debris and my cats. I don't want them clawing at it. But another problem with this is if I want to get a fish out of here, they have way too much space to get away from me to escape. Uh, but one of the advantages of having a larger system like this is the water stays a lot more stable as far as fluctuations in pH and nitrites and nitrates and ammonia all that stuff a larger body of water is more stable But let's go back over here if you're just getting started and you wanted to stay Really small scale low key raise five to ten fish. You could probably do it in this no problem You could do it in this no problem uh, and, and while you're learning the ropes and again, all I did was I got a little pump and I'll, and I'll put that in the description if you want to use the same one that I got. It's been working great. I have no problems with it, no complaints. I put it down on the bottom. Uh, now, <clears throat> one thing that you do want to make sure of if you're going to do that is you don't want it right on the bottom. Get it up off of the bottom a ways. Um, reason being, if, say, that was to get knocked over, while I'm gone, I don't want it to completely drain the pond out and kill my fish. So if it's up off of the bottom, I put it onto a, I think I put a little bucket down in there and set it on top of the bucket. Then that keeps it so that if that tips over, then not all of the water can be pumped out of the pond. Um, let me grab that pump and I'll show you that. Okay, this is the little pump right here. And you can see I have it in a bag here because as is nature's way, little snails and things like that find their way in there and they'll clog it up. Additionally, if you've got really small little fish that are fingerlings, they can get sucked in there and uh, it can kill them. So uh, I put that little mesh bag on there to, to keep the snails away from it, keep the debris from building up sludge and stuff like that from clogging up the pump and it has worked a lot better. Moving on to the bigger system here. Uh, again, this is a thousand gallon pool and the way I have this one set up is 
a pump down in here and you can see that it's sitting inside of a bucket down there for the same reason I described earlier. It's then plumbed up and down and around here comes up into this big canister filter. Inside of there, uh, there's some lava rock, there's some sponges, there's some filter floss, uh, all this material to filter out the solid waste before returning back. And this has worked great, but now my fish are getting too large and this is no longer doing an adequate job. So we're gonna be doing some work on this pretty soon here and we'll make sure to get a video up showing you how we're gonna deal with that. Now in here, I started out with those 35 or so uh, tilapia once they got a little bit larger and they sense bred a couple of times and now I think I'm closer to 100 or more fish in there, maybe 150, I don't know, it's impossible to count them. But uh, being out in the sunlight here in Florida where it's nice and warm, they will breed and they have done so. So I want to keep this video short but let me show you real quickly inside of this canister filter what I have in there and uh, then we'll, we'll call it a wrap for today. And I'm certainly happy to answer any questions and we'll be getting more videos up about um, raising fish in a small scale backyard aquaculture setup. And you can do this of course for aquaponics. Uh, I am not, I'm just doing aquaculture. But let me show you inside this canister filter and then we'll call it a wrap. Okay, so we're gonna try and do this one handed here. Uh, I shut the pump off for the moment. Okay, so what we have in here is a little tee that spray has a bunch of holes in it to make create a spray bar. We have a bunch of these dish scrubby things, and these have worked great for uh, filtering out the material. This is these are some new ones. Just got these the uh, the other day. Down below that, here, let me just pull this out of here. Hang on a moment. Okay, so I've taken the, um, that out. Let me show you inside the barrel here. So you can see that the drain pipes come right in here through the side. These are, if you haven't ever seen them before, these here are what's called a uniseal. And those uniseals can be used to push a pipe through there and create a watertight seal. Now down in the bottom here, there's a bunch of lava rock. This is, I think, a 35 gallon uh, brute trash can. Here we have a little laundry basket set up with this filter material. And this is some shade cloth, some filter floss that you can see. I just rinsed this out yesterday and it's already full of this waste matter so I'm gonna have to rinse this again today that's what I mean when the fish are getting too big there's too many of them they're producing too much waste so I've got to do some work to make that uh, make this system better anyways and more of these little scrubby things so far this has worked great uh, like I said it's I'm now about eight months in it was an inexpensive way to get started with this it is not a perfect long-term solution but if you're just trying to get started, I always believe it's better to uh, go make some mistakes and learn what you need to learn because you don't know what you don't know until you get started. And if you're not willing to make mistakes, then you'll probably never get started. So anyways, I hope that was helpful. Um, ask any questions you got. I'll try and answer them the best I can. And I'll see you again next time. Bye.